Well, with the season starting to change, we are going to be busy in our beds and borders. And be that as it may, our flowers and plants might need a little helping hand. And we are going to be doing an entire series on just that subject throughout the spring and summer months. But today, you'll be introduced to the busybodies and pollinators in the garden. Butterflies. Oh, and also be. Now, without bees and other pollinators, our flowers and plants simply wouldn't flourish. Because every time they dip into that flower head for some of that sweet, sweet nectar, they're picking up pollen on their legs. And when they fly from plant to plant, they're distributing that pollen, and that's helping the plants reproduce and recreate. Right on cue. Here, he fluffed his line. Bees play an invaluable part of our ecosystem. And as gardeners, we really should do our bit in order to encourage their numbers because sadly, bee numbers have been in decline for quite some time now. And there are over 2,000 bee types in Europe alone, so I'm not gonna have a chance to be able to run through them in this video, but some of the more familiar ones are the white-tailed bumblebee, the red-tailed bumblebee, cardi bee, I mean, cardam bee, you've got your honey bee, your bee gees, and obviously your worker bees too. Bees should be a welcome and invited guest in the garden, unlike the wasp, which is just a flying yellow stingy thing. Bees won't sting unless provoked. So if your beds and borders are a bit of a buzz in the summer months, just leave them be. Now, it may only be early spring, but there are plenty of plants to propagate your pollinators. So let's go and have a look at a few. Coinciding with some of that spring sunshine, and it's right on cue, <laughs> look at that. And doesn't it look beautiful? This is Forsythia. And it's great to look at, but it's also a brilliant place for those early risers, those lone bumblebees and those early butterflies to come and have a spring feast and all that wonderful nectar inside. Oh, never mind the bees and the butterflies. I want to get in on this stuff. This is Ribes, this beautiful pink flower that appears at the early spring, but Oh, I'm gonna get very wine tastery now. It's the bouquet, just full of rich, fresh fruit aromas. There's no wonder this appeals to the butterflies and bees at this time of year. Now, it wouldn't be spring without daffodils. And these guys are humble heroes, especially when it comes to pollinators. Those bright yellow petals attract them in, and that tubular petal system inside almost acts as a landing pad for the bees. And they're, again, they're gonna provide a free lunch at this time of year. Now, if you want to do your part for the pollinators next spring, it's about being busy in the beds and borders now. If you plant up things like Helleborus, Hyacinth and Prunus, plus the other plants we've just looked at, this time next year, the butterflies and the bees will have plenty of rich nectar to tuck into. To take your beds from a grade D to a B plus. B plus. I went there. B plus. But let's not forget about the butterflies. Now, they might not be in abundance this early on in spring, but there might be a few that catch your eye. Some of my favorite butterflies to catch a glimpse of are the tortoiseshell, the red admiral, and the unmistakable peacock with those beautiful staring eyes at the bottom of the wings. And again, there's plants that we can add to our garden in order to encourage butterflies to pay us a visit. One of my favorite plants, Verbena bonariensis, provides height, structure, and color, but most importantly, the butterflies love it. Low down, lavender, and who doesn't want lavender in their garden? That rich color and that beautiful perfume, and again, the butterflies will flock to it. And last, but by no means least, the butterfly bush itself, Budlia. It grows pretty much anywhere. It needs little in the way of care or maintenance, but my goodness me, the butterflies love it. Pretty much any flowering plant is going to bring in the butterflies. But contrary to that, butterflies also like areas of long grass and rough ground, areas of brambles and nettles, because that's where they're going to lay their eggs. So if you've got the space and you want to enjoy those wonderful winged wonders, then some of the best work we can do as gardeners is to do absolutely nothing. 